another story that a lot of people, some people ask me this too, because they were like, okay, if your parents, like if you worked minimum wage jobs, how did you move to Korea? So many people are like, how did you just move to South Korea? Uh, my parents don't have a lot of money. For a long time, we lived in like apartments and like trailers and stuff. And that's just how it was. Cause my mom had me when she was like 16 years old. So when you have a kid at 16 and you're all on your own, you're probably not gonna make much. All I've known my whole life was minimum wage jobs. Like my parents always ever had like minimum wage-ish type of jobs. So um, that's like all I've ever known my life. And when I graduated high school, I got a minimum wage job at like GameStop and a few other jobs. This is kind of my story about moving to South Korea. So when I wanted to move to South Korea, I kind of decided one day, uh, me and my ex-boyfriend had broken up and I was like, I'm going to move to South Korea. This is the final straw. Uh, I worked at GameStop and at some points in times, I would have up to four jobs. I worked at Victoria's Secret. I worked at a sushi restaurant. I worked at, what's it called? A distribution center. So you'd like pack things up and you have them ship away. I worked at, um, yeah, GameStop. So I worked at a lot of places at once. And in order to move to South Korea, I learned that it's kind of hard. Uh, because Korea doesn't want an average person coming to Korea. They only want smart, rich people. And I was n neither of those. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not rich. But I found out in order to get a visa in Korea, you have to have $20,000 in your bank account. So that was a definite number that I was like, okay, I have to have $20,000 in my bank account in order to get a visa to stay in Korea. That was an achievable goal. It was really, really hard to achieve, but it was achievable. So when I broke, when me and my ex-boyfriend broke up, I moved in with my parents and I had zero dollars. So I asked my parents if I could live with them rent free in order to save up this $20,000 to move to South Korea. My parents, they were like, I think they were kind of like, this is never going to happen, but they agreed. I gave them a whole plan too. I was like, okay, I'm going to save up this much by this date. I'll have this much in my account. I'm going to save up this much by this date. I'll have this much. Um, and then for the last $2,000, I'm going to sell my car and then I'll have the 20,000 I needed. So I worked at GameStop. I worked, like I said, four other jobs or not four other jobs, three other jobs at the same time. And what's kind of great about having a really big goal in life, by the way, by the way, this is just another like small tip is you can suffer through so much when you have a big goal and you can get through it. It's really cool. I would work out every single day for three hours a day and then I would work all my three jobs, four jobs, and I saved up every single penny that I absolutely could. I spent what I could on food and stuff. Um, once it got a little closer, I realized I wasn't reaching my goal of saving money. So I asked my mom, I went up to my mom and was like, mom, I am like, I need help. I was wondering if my mom's vegetarian or vegan, by the way, my mom's vegan. She doesn't have any animal products at all. So I asked my mom like, hey mom, I am like not really reaching my goal because I'm spending too much on food. And I was like, can you buy us food and I will make you breakfast, lunch and dinner for the till I move to Korea. I was like, you just buy the food. I will make you food. And my mom was like, sure, that's a great deal. And so my mom would buy all my food. So I'm extremely lucky in that regard because not a lot of people get the opportunity to one, live somewhere for free and two, not have to pay for food. But my mom agreed, so she would buy food and I would cook my mom vegan food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. And then I got free food out of it, which is great. So, um, yeah, my mom was like, this is a great deal. Like, I'll give you food and you'll just make me food. Um, and then I got to eat for free. So I saved up. It was really, like I said, really, really, it took a long time. It was an entire year of saving pretty much my entire paycheck. Every single paycheck. I made $11 an hour at GameStop. Um, so not very much. The other jobs were minimum wage, so they were $7.25 an hour. So also not very much. Um, but I saved up every single penny that I could. And then I got to the $18,000. I sold my car for $2,000, like I said. And then I sold everything I owned. Literally everything in my life that I had, I had accumulated up to that point, I sold. I had a record player 
that I got from my grandpa, I sold that. I sold everything. I sold my bed. I sold everything I could. And then I, <laughs> I got my plane ticket to Korea and I had packed my computer. I packed my PlayStation and I packed my clothes. Those are all the things I brought to Korea with me. And yeah, it was nice because like I said, I had a definite goal. My goal was to save $20,000 and I gave myself a year to do it and I was able to do it. And I had no money, just working minimum wage jobs for the most part. GameStop, I made eleven twenty-five dollars an hour. But I think if I can do something, anybody can because I'm not special. Literally, my parents had me um, in high school. My mom was 16 when I was born. We lived in trailers. We had nothing. And I just decided I'm going to move to Korea. That being said, I realized that it's a weird thing because most people in the world aren't going to pack up all their stuff, sell everything they've ever had in their life, and then move to another country on the other side of the world. I guess that is kind of insane. That's kind of crazy, I realize in retrospect. <laughs> but I think I'm a person that is willing to do things that a lot of people aren't willing to do. I don't know why I'm like this, but I, I guess I am. Ah, so I learned Korean when I moved to Korea. When I moved to South Korea, I went to Korean language school because I, in order to stay in Korea, I had to go to school. Uh, I tried to go to Utah University actually, because I'm from Utah and they have a Utah University in Korea. I tried, uh, but I wasn't accepted, which is fair. Um, so I was like, okay, I tried, I took the test. I didn't do well at the test. And so I didn't get accepted into Utah University. So my next bet was to go to Korean language school. So Korean language school, you can pretty much stay in Korea for as long as you're going to Korean language school. Like I said, you have to have $20,000 in your bank account at like all times. They check. Every six months, you have to go to the immigration office and they will ask you for a spreadsheet of how much money you have in your bank account and you have to show that you have $20,000. Um, it's really frustrating, but it's because the country wants those kinds of people. So it makes sense. Um, so I went to Korean language school for a few years and that's how I learned Korean. It was amazing. I really enjoyed Korean language school. I was shocked when they didn't speak English. They teach you Korean speaking Korean. I went into class being like, okay, they'll, they'll probably speak English, right? They don't speak any English. Nobody does. And then I was the only American. Everyone else in Korean language school was like, there were like Iranians, Vietnamese, Egyptians, like um, Uzbekistan, Russians, like everywhere else, like people from all over the world. And I'm the only American here. It's pretty, it's pretty interesting. When I moved to Korea, I cracked down and I started streaming full time. Some people might not remember this, but I would stream probably eight hours every single day in while I lived in my little Korean apartment. Every day I would get home from school at 1 p.m. from 1 until 9 p.m. every single day I would be streaming on Twitch. My dream was uh, I wanted to move to Korea. I wanted to learn Korean and then I wanted to work in esports. Even if I was just handing out coffees to the pro players, my dream was to work in esports. Um, and that was kind of my dream for a long time. I have been pretty shy my whole life. I have had severe acne scars, which definitely um, dampened my confidence for a long time. Pretty much since like 16, once I got acne, um, throughout my entire adult life, I um, had really bad confidence. My confidence is getting a lot better now, um, but I think it's something probably most, most 20 year olds can probably relate to teenagers and 20 year olds um, getting acne. I had z like zero confidence and I really kept to myself a lot. Um, so I think that actually helped me reach a lot of my goals because not having as many friends, um, I would have, I would have a few friends, but they would be really close to me. So I wouldn't, I wasn't the type of person that had like hundreds of friends that were kind of acquaintances. I was the type of person that would have like three friends that were attached to my hip and I would die for. Um, but that being said, I think that helped a lot because when I was trying to reach my goal of going to Korea, saving up money, working hard, like I didn't have a social life. I was working 
to move to Korea, I had to work like every single day for a year. There were no breaks. I was waking up. I was working out. I was, it was pretty much wake up or sorry, I would work out, then go to sleep, then wake up, go to work, repeat, repeat, repeat every single day for more than a year. It was pretty much a year though. Um, but not having a lot of friends probably was beneficial in that particular regard because I didn't feel like I was missing out. I didn't feel like my friends weren't having parties that I would be like, oh, I gotta go to this party. I think that helped a lot being shy and timid because not having a lot of friends, I think, can be kind of beneficial sometimes. And then I would just be like, I, I was really focused on myself and then my close friends that I had knew about my goals and they were also kind of just rooting for me. So they were like, oh, she wants to go to Korea. Um, she's working super hard to go to Korea and they, they believed in me and it was great. So yeah. I think being tiny, being shy and timid didn't help with learning Korean uh, because I think it took me a lot longer to learn Korean to a really good point because I was so shy um, and scared to talk to people and I didn't have any confidence at all from my acne scars, from my just, just low confidence in general. Like my acne scars really brought my confidence down. I've mentioned this before. And it's kind of, okay, talking about this can be sort of shameful, but I have had surgery. So if you look at my old Twitch videos, you can definitely tell that I have had nose surgery for sure. <laughs> my nose is definitely, um, I, I didn't have it changed a whole lot, but there's no more bump on my nose. And the, the tip of my nose is a little, little less bulbous so saying that can be i don't know how do i it feels like people especially men always talk about how they want natural beauty putting it out there and being like oh i'm not natural it makes me feel as if i'm if i'm like uh like mm, unwanted or like that makes me less relatable or less re desirable or less you know <laughs> but it's true i would rather tell you the truth because if you were to go look at my old twitch streams tomorrow you would obviously see that my nose is smaller so you'd obviously see that my acne scars are gone my nose is smaller my confidence has gone up a lot since these procedures 